Hello everyone and a very very warm welcome to another interesting session from Economics Media. And आज का जो सेशन है टॉपिक देख के आपको समझ में आ ही गया होगा कि आज हम लोग बात करने वाले हैं बेसिकली फ्रॉम द माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक थियोरीज एंड इट्स कॉन्सेप्ट ओके तो आप देख पा रहे देर आर थ्री थिंग्स रिटर्न ऑन द बोर्ड ऑर्डनरी गुड वर्सेज गिफ इन गुड वर्सेज इंफीरियर गुड्स सो दिस इज जस्ट द पार्ट जहाँ पे हम लोग बात करने वाले हैं नॉट थ्री बट अबाउट द टू गुड्स एंड इन द नेक्स्ट अपकमिंग पार्ट वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द नेक्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द ऑफ द ऑफ द टॉपिक एंड क्यों हम लोग दो भाग में कर रहे हैं वो आपको कर uh, आज का सेशन के बाद यू विल बी हैविंग एन आइडिया वाई इट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड इन टू सेगमेंट्स ओके सो लेट्स बिगिन टू डे सेशन and uh, by the way before beginning i really want to thank from the entire team of economics media for amazing support and love that you all are giving us from all across the globe and it's really amazing to see all of you learning economics in um, in a way that you all enjoy and uh, truly a very big thank you to all and it means a lot guys thank you so much all right so let's begin today's session right so i'll be talking first about the ordinary goods uh it has another name right it is also known as normal goods so to understand the concept i will be taking the help of some notation don't think there will be a hell lot of notations and everything no there will be few notations and i want all of you to uh, take a tab on that and along with it i'll be taking a help of a diagram Uh, to make you all understand because as they say that uh, when we see a picture the brain remembers it more precisely so i thought let's not do it only theoretically but we will be doing it with the help of a diagram all right so uh, ordinary good or normal good so let us say let us consider a uh, two commodity model let's say x1 and x2 these are the two goods that we have okay two commodities that we have and of course they are having the respective prices p1 and p2 let's say these are the prices and i am going to represent income with m okay the notation that i am taking so i these are the only notations that are going to be there that's right nothing else right so there are two goods two prices and the income level so as i mentioned that i will be taking a help of our diagram to make you all understand so i'm going to erase this part and uh, let me just uh, take the help of since this is microeconomics and this is coming from the demand theory right so i am hoping that you all are familiar with the ic curve and the budget line if not so there will be sessions we will be discussing if you feel like you need some discussion on those areas then we will be doing it otherwise i know you all can do it you all have the books and every materials that you need all right so the first thing i am taking into consideration the ordinary goods right okay so i'm going to plot it let's say this is our axis here is good one good x1 and let's say this is good x2 now let me consider this as the initial budget line so let me mark it as a and this as b and let us say uh, the consumption is taking place over here okay this is the optimal level of consumption x1 star and x2 star right this is a scenario now coming up to a situation to understand this ordinary good let us take up a situation let's say m remains constant <coughs> that is the income remains constant and let us say the p2 also remains constant so these are the three things that remains constant and there is a fall in the level of p1 that means the price of good x1 reduces so what does the theory says for normal good or ordinary good if there is a reduction in the price of of a good let's say x1 the demand for that good will go up 
that means if if this is a situation where x1 uh, p1 is reducing it implies that x1 should go up if this is the relation then it is a case of ordinary or normal goods okay so in a way we can say that since p2 remains constant p1 is only falling that means what given the income is not changing although the price of p1 is falling it means the uh, even after purchasing the previous amount of x1 there is some amount of income left with the person right so it is actually an increment in the budget level of the of the individual so that is how we can plot it in the diagram with respect to a change in the budget line right I'm not going into any further notations as I already mentioned. I'm not going to talk about the slope. I'm not going to talk about uh, the the uh, yeah. So I'm not going to talk about the slope. So in this way, the budget line will be affected, and the budget line will be flatter this time. Okay. So since the price of P two is not changing, that means the intercept will not change. But however. the budget line becomes flatter so let me just extend the axis to this area let's say this is x1 so the budget line becomes flatter okay and of course the commodity x1 consumption will also go up that means now let us say the new optimal price is this one so this is x1 star uh, double star let's say represent it x2 double star right so previously here the ic was intercepting basically this is the point where the intercept is happening so this is the point so this these are the two points which is optimal points or optimal consumption level of the individual right so this is the case in the case of ordinary goods now the question arises that is it always the case that if there is a fall in the price of p1 the consumption of good x1 will go up the answer says not every time the answer is no okay and when this answer is no there is a concept of given good comes in so there is a concept where the given good comes in i'm not going to cover inferior good in this segment so let me just quickly move on to the given good and again i'm going to plot it with the help of a diagram that how the changes are happening in case of a given good all right so bear with me all right so coming to given goods again i'm going to take the support of our diagram so let me just plot the initial situation right let's say this is x1 and let us say this is x2 okay so initial budget line let us say this is the budget line a b and let us say this is the point of optimal consumption where the ic and budget line are intersecting let's say this is ic1 so this is x1 star and x2 star i hope the diagram is completely okay with you so again taking a situation where the price of p1 reduces but this time what is happening that the consumption of x1 also reduces if this is the case then it is a situation of given goods okay so let me just help you out with some of the example um i will be dealing with some examples but not right now try to understand what is happening in the diagram firstly so given this p1 reduces and uh, that means what m and p2 are constant right so m and p2 these are constant okay this means what again the budget line will become flatter right so let me diagram uh, draw the budget line like this this is the new budget line let's say a b1 this is the new budget line okay and 
the consumption of x1 reduces so let us say for simplicity i am just not erasing this ic but however making it a bit smaller so that you can understand so this is ic1 okay i haven't done anything i just reduce the upper side of the of the ic curve now the x1 should reduce so the ic will shift leftward right so this is ic2 this is the point of new consumption which is x1 double star and x2 double star as you can see the consumption has reduced so previously x1 star was here and right now it is here x1 double star so there is a reduction in the consumption of x1 and this is the new ic so again these are the both these both are the optimal points optimal consumption points so what is happening over here why why this is so let us take up an example i hope that will make you easier to understand where the individual is having two commodities uh, for example let's say a uh, high quality uh, milk and and a uh, relatively not that good quality of a bread maybe okay so if the price of the bread reduces then the individual will not be going out to the market to purchase more of that bad quality bread rather since he will be left to it, uh, left out with some extra money um, even after purchasing his required amount of bread this extra amount of money he or she will be investing to get more of milk a better quality food all right so this is a very uh, simple example of giffen good i hope you have understood the concept of giffen good and now uh, let me just take you and end this session with a very classic statement that all giffen goods are inferior goods however all inferior goods are not necessarily given goods have you heard of this statement before if yes type in the comment box that you have heard it and stay tuned because in the next right next session we will be discussing this statement and we will be proving this statement so stay tuned thank you so much for watching till the end if you like this session hit the like button and if you are new to our channel do subscribe because it helps us to grow more of the content that you are seeking and uh, press the bell icon so that you never miss any update from the channel of economics pedia thank you so much once again for the unlimited love support that you all are giving us thank you so much